In the last lecture, we pointed out that manager discretion, including manager's decisions and actions, will be influenced by organizational environment and the organization's culture. So, in today's lecture, we will discuss how the external environment influences the operating of the organization. The term external environment refers to factors and forces outside the organization that affect its performance. Commonly, the external environment of the organization includes specific environment and general environment. Specific environment is the external forces that have a direct and immediate impact on the organization. General environment contains broad economic, social cultural, political or legal, demographic, technological, and global conditions that may affect the organization. The economic component includes factors such as interest rates, inflation, changes in disposable income, stock market fluctuation, and business cycle states. For example, the increase of the average wage in society may stimulate the business of a coffee shop, as people may have more disposable income for consumption. The demographic component is concerned with trends in population characteristics, such as age, race, gender, education level, geographic location, income, and family composition. For example, the post-millennial generation starts to enter the workplace. This youngest identified age group demonstrates unique work attitudes and value system, which will significantly challenge the existing management system of the organization. The political or legal component looks at laws and regulations. It also includes a country's political condition and stability. The harmonious and stable political environment in China significantly benefits the development of every industry. The social cultural component is concerned with societal and cultural factors such as values, attitudes, trends, traditions, lifestyles, beliefs, tastes, and patterns of behaviors. For example, to better respect the religions and dietary habits of the passengers, airlines need to provide special meals, such as no-beef meal and vegetarian meal, based on their requests. The technological component is concerned with scientific or industry innovation. In recent years, China is emphasizing the research on the new technology, such as 5G telecom, big data, artificial intelligence, electric vehicles, and industry internet, which significantly accelerate the development of every industry. By 2019, there are around 74,000 internet data centers in China, which accounts for 23% worldwide. You may notice that many shops out of China start to accept Alipay and WeChat Pay in order to accommodate the needs of Chinese customers. This trend is also driven by the technology development. The global component contains those issues associated with globalization and a world economy. We will provide you more information about global environment in Chapter 3. After understanding these external environmental factors, can you think about what kind of influence this factor will bring to you if you open a coffee shop or a restaurant in your hometown? It is vital for managers to know what various components of external environment are. However, understanding how environment affects manager is equally important. We are going to look at three possible ways that the environment constrains and challenges managers. 
First of all, it is the jobs and employment. When any or all external environmental conditions change, such as economic, demographic, technological, or globalization, one of the most powerful constraints that managers have to face is the impact of such changes on jobs and employment. For example, during the last global recession, millions of jobs were eliminated and the unemployment rate significantly increased. Similarly, because of travel restriction during the pandemic period, many people in the airline industry lost their jobs. The changes in the external environment do not only affect the types of jobs that are available, but also influence the ways those jobs are created and managed. For instance, due to the digitization, the organization boundaries are shifted, and many people prefer to work from home, especially during the COVID-19. Another constraint posed by external environment is the amount of uncertainty found in that environment, which can highly influence the organizational outcomes. Environmental uncertainty refers to the degree of change and complexity in an organization's environment. Based on the definition of environmental uncertainty, we can see that the amount of uncertainty is normally evaluated through two dimensions, the degree of change and the degree of environmental complexity. If the components in organization's environment change frequently, it is a dynamic environment. If change is minimal, it is stable one. A stable environment normally has no new competitors, few technological breakthroughs by current competitors, little activity by pressure groups to influence the organization. Now I have a question for you. If the change in the external environment is predictable, is that considered dynamic? The answer is no. For example, during the Chinese New Year, millions and millions of people travel in China to either visit their family members or have leisure trips. Therefore, the airlines normally receive high amount of revenue in February because of large number of passengers. However, the drop off from March to April is significant. Because such change is predictable, the environment is not considered dynamic. When we talk about degree of change, we mean change that is unpredictable. If the change can be anticipated, it is not an uncertainty for managers. The other dimension of uncertainty describes the degree of environmental complexity. It looks at the number of components in an organization's environment and the extent of knowledge that the organization has about those components. An organization with fewer competitors, customers, suppliers, and government agencies faces a less complex and uncertain environment. Complexity is also measured in terms of knowledge an organization needs about its environment. For example, in order to be more competitive, the manager in a coffee shop should have the sophisticated knowledge about the coffee bean. Then he can select the best supplier and provide high quality of coffee to his customers. How does the concept of environmental uncertainty influence managers? Please look at this table. Each of the four cells represents different combination of degree of complexity and degree of change. Cell 1, the stable and simple environment, represents the lowest level of environmental uncertainty. While cell 4, the dynamic and complex environment, represents the highest. Not surprisingly, managers have the greatest influence on organizational outcomes in the stable and simple environment and the least in the dynamic and complex environment. Since the uncertainty poses a threat to an organization's effectiveness, manager must try to minimize it. Given a choice, 
Managers would definitely prefer to operate in the least uncertain environments. However, they rarely control that choice. Actually, the external environment today for most industries is highly dynamic and complex. To better deal with the components in the external environment and understand their influence, appropriate management on the stakeholder relationship is essential. So, who are stakeholders? Why they are important? Stakeholders are any constituencies in the organization's environment affected by an organization's decisions and actions. These groups or people have a stake in the organization or are significantly influenced by the decisions and actions of the organization. Meanwhile, these groups or people can also highly influence the performance of the organization. Therefore, the influence and impacts are mutual. This chart identifies some common stakeholders for an organization. You may already notice that these stakeholders include both internal and external groups. For example, the employees is a kind of internal group within the organization, while the competitors, government agencies, and media may be the external. Why? Because both of the internal and external groups can affect what an organization does and how it operates. Why should managers pay strong attention to the stakeholder relationships? First of all, the positive relationship with the stakeholders can lead to desirable organizational outcomes and can help organizations to achieve better performance. Meanwhile, the organization depends on these external stakeholders as source of inputs and as outlines for outputs. For example, the company needs to purchase the raw material from the suppliers and need to sell their goods to and services to the customers. Therefore, managers must consider the interests of these stakeholders when making the decisions. We will address this issue in more detail in the chapter of Corporate Social Responsibility. Then, how to manage the stakeholder relationships? First, you need to identify the external stakeholders of your organization. You need to understand how many stakeholders in the external environment that will influence your daily operation and who they are. Then, you need to determine the particular interests and concerns for each of these stakeholders. Understanding their expectations and needs is extremely essential. Different stakeholders have different levels of influence on your operation. Therefore, you need to evaluate and decide how critical each external stakeholder is to your organization. Of course, you need to pay more attention to the ones with stronger influence. Finally, you need to determine how to manage each individual external stakeholder relationship based on their interests, concerns, and levels of influence. Different managing strategies should be developed for each external stakeholders. This is the end of today's lecture. I hope that you can now have a better understanding on the external environment of the organization. We will continue to discuss the organizational culture in our next lecture. Thank you.